Yes, what's up, fans? <laughs> I am Noelle at Noelle's Notions, and this is Fame by the Flame with none other than... Gushishi. <laughs> <laughs> I could talk in buttons like this whole right, time. Right, right. What the f*** was that? Sushi for being on uh, Fame by the Flame and freaking live at 103.5 Man of Many Talents. He's not only uh, switching, <laughs> switching over gears, <laughs> answering calls, playing tunes, but he's also doing a fire interview. So I'm so excited to be with you here on uh, Hot 103.5. Um, thank you guys uh, for supporting Fame by the Flame and supporting wonderful artists like Sushi over here. <laughs> thank you. Thank now, you. speaking of which, your name always kills me. How did that come to be? All right. So I was in, <laughs> I, most a lot of people don't know this, but I actually okay. play, I was in marching band in, in high oh, school. Oh, okay. What instrument? Um, I played snare. I played okay. marching snare. I was a center snare my senior year, actually. And more recently... And on the 18th, I'm actually going to be playing at the opening game for the Kings because I play on the Kings drum line too. Cool. And that is also your birthday, right? Also yes. my birthday. Birthday boy. <laughs> so I, I'm working all day that day too. But um, So I joined this marching band called MLK Steppers, and it was a historically black college style marching band. Cool. So it's like the high step in and all that yeah. show style marching band. In that kind of band, if you ever watch the movie Drumline, they call yes. it the newbies crabs. When you're a crab, you get a crab nickname that you only shake after you've been in the band for quite some time. Okay. I was the token Asian kid in the group besides <laughs> another dude who was Mr. Magoo, the other guy who was Jake Long, American Dragon, and then okay. me who was Sushi. Got it, got it, got it. So definitely your, uh, your drumming and style and music kind of then drifted over, and you kept the name, though. You didn't? Yeah. You didn't <laughs> Actually, it. it was while I was there that I decided to just keep it. So, okay. yeah, it was like by the time that I had embraced it, I was taking Japanese in high school already. So I was like learning how to write it in Japanese correctly cool. and all that. I was like, I'm keeping it. Yeah, yeah. I like it. And then it. just change the spelling after all that. Yeah, I was going to say, I like keeping the asterisk and the exclamation point as well, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That all came more so like later on, just me. I've, uh, I have a lot of friends who are graphic designers and, okay. and uh, my the most notable, my homie Jordan Yee, who does all of the, the cover art that anybody's really ever seen from me. Yeah. Um, he's ruined my life, Lightweight. <laughs> I can't see things normal anymore. I always see things and I'm like, yo, those letters should be like a little the, bit closer yeah. together right there. You know, I, I have those issues all the time. Yeah, now. definitely uh, habits of graphic artists, right? Yeah. Everything has to <laughs> be like meticulously in order and it's, all set up it's the definition of a blessing and a curse yes <laughs> <laughs> well um for a rapper on the radio you are involved in so much um before we get into all the things that you do off air i'd love to talk about how you got on air so okay. how did you um build this relationship with hot 103.5 um shout out to stage of the gemini because actually uh he had stage. a lot to do with it um there was a show i used to work at get a clue downtown okay. when it was at the mall and uh, a friend of mine was promoting for uh, Coyote Tap House. He was like the entertainment booking at Coyote Tap House at the time. And um, he, I mean, obviously the venue's not there anymore, but at the time they were booking out a lot of events like that. And he hit me up and knew that we were kind of like the hub for selling tickets mm -hmm. when I was at Get A Clue. Had us sell tickets to this show that he got, which was Sage the Gemini Halloween at Coyote Tap House. Okay. Presented by Hot 103.5. Got it. Okay. At the time, Hot 103.5 is a full-on pop station, like One yeah. Direction, yep. like them playing Sage the Gemini was not a thing. Yeah, it's going out of their comfort zone, definitely. Right. And so for them to do that show, it didn't make sense. So that night, none of the personalities showed up. Um, and at the time, a lot of those guys were getting ready. They were already on their way out. They were moving, going yeah. on to something else. And so they moved, and obviously nobody's there, so... The main guy that was booking the entertainment was like, dude, you host the parties here already. I was the in-house host at the, at the venue at the time. Okay. So he was like, I just need you since nobody's here, just go up there and host the event and just tell them we have this event that we need on Friday. I was like, bro, I'm not going to get up there and just tell people we have a party <laughs> on Friday. Like, we're going to turn this into one of those. Yeah. And so I did. I went back and I chatted with Sage and it was like a real simple conversation just like he hadn't remembered the last time he met me because he's met so many people because it was right when gas pedal and red nose took off okay um 
and that conversation was really cool because it was just us kind of like back and forth, real chill. And I guess the program director at the time saw that and was like, you didn't fanboy over him. Yeah. And I was like, why am I going to fanboy over some dude that like I damn near know? <laughs> yeah. You know? Like, and, just because he doesn't remember me doesn't mean I don't right. like remember this guy. <laughs> right. And so um, it was that day that they sold out the venue that night. Thanks. They didn't think anybody was going to be there because they're yeah. like, this is so off-brand for us. Yeah, it's our first like crossover event. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it honestly didn't make sense for them to throw that event. So um, with that being said, putting me on to do that, he heard me from backstage and was like, yo, this dude's up there killing it right yeah. now. And the program director at the time was like, he's not even like performing, he's just hosting the party. Yeah. She's like, he's killing it though. Yeah. So right after that show that day, we had the whole thing cracking, and after that, she at the time, the program director from the time, was like, "Yo, come to my office on Monday." Cool. It was like right time, right yeah, place. Yeah, definitely. Because they, like I said, people were already on their way out, you know, so they needed somebody to fill in that spot, and yeah. I just happened to be there. So cool. So definitely, everything aligned in the universe for you to have the dope spot that you have right now. Yeah. Now you said that you've been in music for a long time, starting all the way back um, with you know being in marching band. How did you transition from, you know, snare to now, you know, snapping together different types of beats to not only being on the radio, but creating your own stuff? It was kind of, it was kind of easy for me. Like I, I learned how to use a program. Like I used, I used Fruity Loops 4 at the time was like okay. the earliest <laughs> thing for me. Um, and they're on like 11 or something like that now. They're definitely like way up way there up in that. numbers. But at the time, my cousin was just like playing with it on her computer. Mm -hmm. And so I got on and I had beats in my heads constantly because I was writing them for stuff for the drum line to play. Yeah. When I had a platform to do that elsewhere, it made everything so much. It, it, I was expanding on what I was learning, how yeah. to use keys, how to do anything else, like learning bass lines, song structure and stuff like that. So it went from me having all of these concepts that I'm learning from marching band mm -hmm. and being able to utilize them somewhere else. And it was like a blessing for me when trap music came into play because <laughs> I started being able to do all the craziness in the production because yeah. you couldn't do that at the time. You had to do like simple like Nelly and the St. Lunatics type beats that were in suit. They were all <laughs> super streamlined, just super simple. So it was cool to be able to bring that back when all the trap music thing kind of yeah. came out. Well, and it's definitely cool to see how you can create your own sound now digitally, like you were talking about with that new move um, from, you know, just kind of basic beats and then like loud trap, dubstep, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So how did you come up then with your own songs? Because I know you have a ton right now on available on Apple Music and um, Spotify as well. Yeah. And SoundCloud. Yeah, so, SoundCloud for sure. Yes. And one of them um, is called My Year. Right? That's, the, that's <laughs> the lead joint right yeah, now. That's yeah, that's the anthem, you guys. So if you haven't heard that, that's the anthem for this year. It's not only his year, but it's going to be all of our years. And I want to go into that a little bit because you're very uh, Sacramento proud. So I want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, I mean, born and raised in Sacramento and too many times had like, I've, I, I remember being in like my first semester of college in like 2009 and seeing all these people be keyboard warriors, as they call them or whatever, okay. where they would sit behind their computer and complain about how boring Sacramento was and how there's nothing to do in Sacramento. While me and my homies are like, dude, we threw a show last week yeah, and none of y'all were there and you're telling us it's boring. Like, show up. Yeah. You know, so um, I, I've kind of like grown to, to love the things you can find in this city. Because it yeah. wasn't just us that was feeling like that. We ended up finding so many people we could relate to that were doing the same thing. When we got linked up with the Neighborhood Watch with uh, Fifth Ave and C Plus and all of them before where they're at now with DeLorean and yeah. C Plus's current movement. You know, so um, building on that and seeing that there was so much talent in this city, there's no reason to not have pride in this city. Yeah. And I grew up in the era of Jason Williams, Mike Bibby, Chris Weber, <laughs> Vladi Divac, Peyton Stoyakovich, Scott Pollard, Doug... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shout out Kingsley. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shout out Bobby Jackson too. What's up, player? He actually comes to parties with us at Dive Bar every once in a while. Oh, so, well, know. so all of you guys show up. Show up. <laughs> uh -huh. But yeah, so like I I found pride in this city just because I know how much people can hate on it and how much people don't believe in it. It's almost fun being a part and being one of the, one of the um, advocates for the underdog. Yeah. Well, you know, and you said in the past that the road is more fun uh, when you carpool. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I take that to mean, you know, that everybody in SAC can definitely join together and make each other better and, yeah. you know, maximize um, everyone's own potential. So, 
Who have you worked with in the past that you want to give a shout out to, and who are you looking forward to collaborating with in the future? Well, first and foremost, I got that quote from my homegirl, April Bambao, who actually uh, used to, speaking of Sacramento Proud, was one of the um, directors at Boogie Monsters, the okay. dance crew. And so when I was really plugged in with Capital Roots back in the day in Elk Grove, um, that was like her big quote and doughy rock posted it like, yo, this is the quote of the year. And it stuck <laughs> with me ever since. Yeah. It's a dope quote. Shout out. <laughs> um, but, uh, I, I've always worked with my brother, Ru R. U, who started the awesome, awesome family. So they're doing a lot of big things out in LA. Um, and then moving, trying to move a lot of things more towards the Sacramento area. Mm -hmm. Um, we have a lot of projects out together from me and Ru R. U together. We used to be a group called the sweep, just me and him as a duo. <laughs> and it was, um, it was a lot of fun kind of being able to be in the studio working on that kind of yeah. stuff. And then when he moved away to L.A., we both started expanding where our sounds went, but it kind of went up and then went like this. Oh, OK. So they're still going up, but the direction just, just isn't yeah. the same. Yeah, the yeah. transition happened. Um, every once in a while, we come together and we meet in the middle and that's where you get a song <laughs> like Hold It Down. Which yes, was a Ru that's one of my favorites, you guys. So check that one out if you haven't already heard it. I'm yeah. sorry if you haven't already heard it because it's a dope <laughs> song. And it's definitely a Sacramento representative yes, record top definitely. to bottom. Yes, definitely. I think you shout out, what, David Garibaldi in that Yeah, video? Garibaldi. Yeah. Uh, no, actually, no, that's in uh, Come Through a Slit. That's oh, okay, yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, that, check that one out to you guys. And, and I shouted <laughs> out to Marcus Cousins, so that ages that song on its own. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but, uh, I, in the studio here, I've chatted with Pilo about possibly doing some work. So shout out to the whole HBK gang. Um, hasn't officially taken off the ground because right when we had that conversation, it was right before it put me on something with him and E40 took mm -hmm. off. So at that point he just got so busy. It was ridiculous to even try to hold that conversation yeah. anymore. Yeah. Um, but in the meantime, I linked back up with my homie B Lewis, who we had a project called space music out in 2012, I believe it was. Um, he's out in San Jose. He's done a lot of great production work. Um, a lot of things that are kind of undercover. He's been a part of a Chris Brown record. Um, he's working on some other placement stuff and has some secret features under another name that I can't really bring up. Okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, he, sh we won't tell. <laughs> so he and I got together not too long ago, um, and decided we're going to get back together and work on some new stuff. And I actually asked him if he'd be down to executive produce a lot of the, the okay. upcoming stuff. So. Great. So we have a lot more uh, great things to expect from you. Yeah. Um, and I mean, you, this year literally has been your year. You've been at concerts in the park, at um, Hoff Day, um, at the Block Party. Yeah. Now I hear you're doing something at Golden Bear. Yes. <laughs> um, so actually that spawned from the Block Party. Um, this was our second year doing On the Block. Um, the first time around, we kind of didn't fully prepare for what we were doing. Okay. Um, we only had one stage. It was kind of awkwardly set. So bottle and barlow was like in the back. So if you wanted to drink, you got to be you stuck would, behind yeah. the bar. Um, this year we had alcohol on the street. We had it all fenced off two stages back to back to back. And everyone who was there has said that it was like one of the best flowed shows that they've seen in a while. Oh yeah. I was definitely there. It was cool. I really <laughs> liked how it was like, you could drink at the porch of Bottle and Marlowe and just yeah. like witness <laughs> both the stages going on. Had the whole VIP section over in the back, like definitely really open. I loved it. And we tried to organize it as much as we could so that people felt the flow of the show. Yeah. Because a lot of times a block party is so focused on everything that's not the music it's usually focused on you know they do they even do the r street block party where the music is kind of like the background thing mm -hmm. which is cool because it brings out all the other elements of what the block party can be for us we wanted to bring back the fact that like yo it's not really a party unless you have the music yeah and so we did the block party fully i mean it was announcing tree tone records and and um the whole movement that that we're working on which a lot of changes are coming for by the way so be on the lookout for that too um that was a big show it was like a huge homecoming feel show um and right after i stepped off stage danny from golden bear came up and was like yo can you do that at golden bear in october i was like yeah how about we do it my birthday week yeah yes definitely so october <laughs> so, 19th yes the next weekend you guys right before rolling loud so we can yeah. get a little like uh pre-game pre-party right build everyone up <laughs> yo but you know what they keep on telling me is like yo you might have to stop inviting people to this thing because right? golden bear they're, they're is not, not that big they're, they're, <laughs> we're gonna blow the capacity you guys so, yeah right so get there early so you can uh fill up the space you and know it's free it? yeah <laughs> so can't beat that oh, right i think i have a drop for that too it's free yeah <laughs>
Free ninety nine. It's free ninety nine. <laughs> so no reason not to go and uh, get wasted is really what. Absolutely, what it is. <laughs> absolutely is exactly what that is. So, um, do you want to tell us a little bit about um, your good company radio? Yes. I know that that is in the works right now. Yes. Yeah, so, um, good company is a crew. Hella good company it is though. So, so good company. Yeah, it's not as good. It's hella good. And well, you know, it actually spawned from a lot of things. Like, there's hella good companies out there. Yeah. You know, there's a plenty of there's a brand in New York called Good Company. Like. It's a very simple term to have for just like we're good company. You but know the what I mean? hella makes it like a California it's stamp. For stamped sure, it, yeah. for sure. And so um John Reyes and DJ Drewski both stay out in the Bay Area now. Okay. But uh Drewski's from Roseville. Um I think John might actually be not nah, he's not from that area though. But anyway, I see he's gonna be hella mad that I didn't know that too. I know he's gonna flag me down right after this. Um, it's like you don't know my address. I know exactly. <laughs> but they're both out in the Bay Area now, so they kind of, they do their thing representing out there. Mm -hmm. um, me and Sean Lamar of uh, Delorean uh, hold it down in Sacramento for a lot of the situations we do here, and then we bring it all together for Good Company Radio. Um, uh, we're responsible more for throwing parties first but we okay. decided we wanted to use it on a platform where we've heard radio shows you know i do a radio mm -hmm. show here and this is more of like a formatted like we do the the thing that's for the masses in a more corporate setting yeah like top 40 stuff like that yeah so how do you do that how do you take that structure and do it with something that you have full control over mm -hmm. and that was for us when we did good company radio we decided to do that where we do it's very topical and new subjects um when the news is slow we know how to get the topics rolling yeah. so big shout out to my brother sean lamar and our homie Vinny, who's the fact check for the show <laughs> um and jordan Yee, who actually does all the art for that too so the, oh, the, the yeah. same so guy full, that ruined full, my life for, full circle right <laughs> with all the homies and sad. yeah and that's where i say you know it's the road to success is more fun when you carpool because you can bring the people together that you want to fit into that one car and you take that yeah. trip. Yeah. And that's what of, good company bunch is. Bunch of clowns in a car, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll figure out a way yeah. to pack it. Well, you know, SAC has so many talented people and I'm really happy that all the talent is really recognizing each other and coming together and understanding that we can all work together to make put us on the map, you know, like a couple years back, Sacramento was not what it is today. And I'm glad that people are stepping up and saying, Hey, this is my hometown. This is my home city. Like I want to put us on the map and I want it to be something that I can be proud of. So yeah. I appreciate all the talented people out there putting in the work. So yeah. I think there was a, there was a time where there were too many people that thought I'm going to be the one to put the city on rather than like, how do we put each together, other on? Yeah. How do we work together? And I think more, more recently you see, crews start forming again and then the crews start working and intertwining with each other and yeah. when that happens you see something so much bigger happen for the yeah, city yeah definitely it's that time to be collective and help mm. everybody out yeah um well i know you have a lot of stuff coming up in the works i know that you have a ton of cool shit that people can check out online right what's yeah. the best way for fans to connect with you uh follow me honestly everything is hella sush including dot com so make yeah. sure you go keep that <laughs> i'm gonna have to go pay my account still so <laughs> Hold off on that, but for the most part, everything is hella sush. Cool. <laughs> so you guys can connect with him, hella sush, everything. <laughs> um, you guys can also find him performing um, Monday through Friday, 7 to midnight at Hot 103.5, right here. <laughs> um, and then how can people find out about your hella good company like events? Like where can they Oh, follow find us on Instagram cool. at hella good company. All right. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Sushi, for being on Fame by the Flame. Um, really appreciate all that you're doing for the SAC community and for um, us on the radio. Um, again, I'm Noelle at Noelle's Notions, and this is Fame by the Flame with Sushi.